This has never happened before. This trip will be the biggest in the history of the Yan Buyan channel and probably the most unexpected for me. It was spontaneous. I bought a ticket without any preparation and flew to probably the most controversial country on the planet. Some people hate it, while others see it in their sweetest dreams. It's almost impossible to predict how this big trip to America will end. But it begins in a cute little town called San Diego. This city has a lot to surprise and delight you with. They're running around like crazy. Here you can remember Europe. Hello, Spain. And be sure to meet some of the best residents of San Diego. How cool are they? The smell isn't a delight, though. But you can't avoid disappointment. I don't feel any pleasure after spending $62. Here I learned what Americans like about Russian cuisine. Vareniki, dumplings, stuffed cabbage rolls. And what dish Americans fear more than anything in the world? They can't look at it. They're so terrified with it. Anyway, in the next hour, how do people in San Diego live and why do they love their city so much? Don't you say it, I can't hear it Sunny San Diego is one of the top five ideal cities for living and tourism. Today I'm going to find out why, but I'll start by getting to know the city from its origins. It was in 1542 that a European first set foot here. The Spanish navigator Juan Rodriguez Cabrillo's ship arrived on American shores. His monument is visited by everyone who comes to San Diego. It is a tribute. It also offers a great view on the harbor and the cities of San Diego and Tijuana, Mexico. For the first 300 years, San Diego, like the rest of California, belonged to Mexico. In the mid-19th century, after the Mexican War, California became part of the United States. I've already paid tribute to San Diego's Mexican history by visiting the Cabrillo Monument. The next monument I go to is a part of American history. Another iconic sculpture that's impossible to skip if you are in San Diego. It is a sailor passionately kissing a nurse. You probably know this legendary photo by Eisenstadt, taken in New York's Times Square on the day of the Japanese surrender. That picture and that kiss became a symbol for Americans of the end of the Second World War. A series of sculptures were made based on it in various U.S. cities. The couple in San Diego are called the Unconditional Surrender. Diego has created a park where millions of tourists flock to see how the first Mexicans and then the first Americans lived. If you ask a local what to visit first, they will send you to the old town. After all, not only is it the oldest settlement in San Diego, it's where California itself is said to have originated. Because this is where the first European settlement of the state was. And now it's a historic park. I suggest that you and I take a walk through it. interesting and colorful place. You can take a lot of interesting photos here. But it consists mostly of shops, souvenir shops and restaurants. You can hear authentic Mexican performers and buy handicrafts. I really wanted to check out the museum, but alas, they were closed. So I went to one of the beaches. San Diego is world famous for those. I'll be honest, I didn't choose the most ordinary one. Remember how in American movies everyone is walking their dogs on the beach, dogs splashing around in the ocean, everyone's happy and contented. In fact, there are special beaches for dogs. People come here with their fallen friends and relax. It's a great place for them. They're having so much fun. They're running around like crazy. 
people of San Diego call this place off-leash. The dogs have complete freedom here. I'd also like to point out the beach is perfectly clean. It's so groovy. It's a place, you know, it's like a heartwarming place. The dogs are so happy. Every day the people of San Diego can afford not only a walk by the ocean, but also an easy trip to a different country. I wish I could tell you that we will cross the border and walk around Tijuana, but unfortunately, no. Because basically, we can cross the border as tourists, but the American side will not let us back through the land border. We'll have to fly to Mexico City, from Mexico City to Los Angeles, and from LA back to San Diego. As you can imagine, it's a long way, so this idea will instantly discard it. While you need a passport while crossing the pedestrian border, you won't need documents at all while crossing the automobile border. Not at all. You can see for yourself. There is a car border behind me. Cars don't even stop. They just drive through. On the one hand, yes, it saves time, but on the other hand, you can imagine how this can be used for not so good purposes, such as drug trafficking, kidnapping, and so on and so forth. But when crossing the border from Mexico back to the US, people stand in traffic jams for six, seven, eight hours. That's a peculiar fact. The Mexican city of Tijuana is just around the bend there, close but out of my reach. But I have time to talk to the people of San Diego. Today I'm going to introduce you to three interesting people. They've lived here for a long time and they come from the CIS countries. First we meet Ludmila. San Diego is of course famous for its Mexican food, so you cannot leave here without trying the local cuisine, real burritos. It was here that I decided to meet Ludmila, who has lived in the US for a very long time. Ludmila, tell us about yourself. I've lived in San Diego for five years. I really like the city, I like the weather, the climate, and I like the people. And yes, the proximity to Mexico, to the Mexican border. I think it's a huge advantage for us, the locals, a huge plus. What is it? The first is, of course, medical tourism. It's no secret that dentistry in the US is insanely expensive. And let's say a basic dentist's job can cost thousands of dollars. Let's say a crown, an implant, an implant in the US costs $1,400, uh, $3,500. In Mexico, it's $1,500. So all those who want to save money cross the border on foot or go by car and use the services of Mexican doctors. But in addition to dentists, plastic surgery is also well developed in Mexico. Americans are happy to have all kinds of plastic surgery. Isn't there such a fear of, say, having plastic surgery in Mexico? And how are the doctors there? Well, let's put it this way. Word of mouth has never been cancelled. Everyone is asking for recommendations, trying to find a good doctor. Turns out, San Diegans come to Tijuana not just for treatment or plastic surgery, but for freedom. When the worldwide quarantine began, everything was closed because the restrictions were very strict. We went to restaurants in Mexico. Oh, come on, seriously? Yeah, because everything worked there. Movies... It was a breath of fresh air. Yes, a breath of fresh air indeed. And to feel that difference, that contrast, it's really, I dare say, it's like glitter and poverty. Here, everything is so polished, and there you find yourself in another world. Well, that's a plus, but there is always a downside. Of course there is a downside. I'm sure you all know it's no secret that drug trafficking is huge. Where it comes from? It's here. In some years, Tijuana has led the rankings as the most criminal city in the world. There is also human trafficking. By the way, this cafe where we are, this town is called El Cajon. There is an intersection somewhere around here. I don't know exactly where, but it's considered one of the most dangerous intersections where kidnapping takes place. Still. Well, I don't know how still I don't walk there. According to a famous American magazine, San Diego is home to some of the luckiest people in the US. And you'll soon find out why. San Diego is a city of millionaires. In fact, there are a lot of rich people here. And as I always say, where there are millionaires, the poor are better off. 
Of course, there's more competition in terms of jobs. The population density is higher. I think it's not so easy to get a job here. It's not so easy to find a good job. Plus, the cost of rent and housing is several times higher than in, let's say, Minnesota. The cost of living is higher here. But living here, you realize it's worth it. Because, as the locals here in San Diego joke, they say we pay sunshine tax. That's a tax on... On the sun. Yeah, on good weather, on sunshine, the local San Diegans are proud of their microclimate. In such a microclimate, a unique park couldn't help but spring up. That's where I'm going now. I'm in one of the biggest parks in the US. It's Balboa Park. Basically, it's just a city in itself. Just listening what it has would take half a video. There are several gardens, 16 of them. And there are museums, 16 of them too. There are four theaters, a stadium, a children's railway, and it's also home to the most famous zoo. Anyway, let's go to see everything. feels like you're somewhere in Spain, some Plaza del San Diego. <laughs> Hello, Spain! The park's central street, called El Prada, is easily recognizable by its sumptuous Spanish colonial revival style. You can take a trip around the world in an hour without leaving this street. First stop by the Japanese Friendship Garden and then explore African culture and visit an exhibition of Mexican art and then a glimpse into a Spanish village. The most visited place in Balboa Park is the zoo. Here it is, the most visited zoo in the world. They say that here, without the awful enclosures and cages, almost 4,000 animals live in conditions as close to natural as possible. Some 650 animal species can be seen here. What can I say? Even pandas breed here. And that's very rare for zoos. Let's go and see if it's really true. I'm against zoos. I'm against circuses and all dolphinariums, but the zoo is one of the San Diego's main attractions, so just can't not come here and show it to you. But hopefully someday all zoos, circuses and dolphinariums, of course, they'll disappear. Admission to the park is $62 per person. It's just really expensive. In 1922, they tried to keep animals here without enclosures. By the way, lions were the first to get their freedom. Then, gradually, other species were introduced. By the way, the zoo was a pioneer in another very topical issue today. For the first time in history, the director's post here was held by a woman, Belle Bankley. Certainly, the park is very well made. Paths, waterfalls, jungle. But still, a zoo is a zoo. I don't feel any pleasure after spending $62. Rather, very deep sorrow and sadness. Honestly, it's a waste of money. I do love giraffes, but it's better to see them in the wild. For example, watch my safari video, and that's interesting. What graceful animals they are, I'm just amazed. The zoo was ahead of its time on another issue as well. In fact, I came here for one more reason. You could say that this zoo is where the history of YouTube began. Yeah, yeah, you heard right. Just imagine, this is where the very first video uploaded to YouTube was shot. In it, co-founder Jawed Karim is standing next to elephants. This one might be one of them, by the way. All right, so here we are, one of the uh, elephants. 
cool thing about these guys is that, is that they have really, really, really long um, fronts, and that's that's cool. And that's pretty much all there is to say. It was a great walk, albeit a bit sad. Time to have a bite, especially since I have an appointment with Ike. He has his own restaurant in San Diego. Ike, how did you end up in America? Our family moved from Georgievsk, which is in Stavropol territory, to San Francisco in 1998. And when I moved to San Diego, I loved the city so much. Ike's restaurant is quite popular. Its visitors are far from just Russian speakers. It opens at 5 p.m. This is not usual for us, but for an American city it is rather justified. You have a restaurant with a very interesting name, Pushkin. Why did you call it that? What kind of cuisine do you have? Predominantly, I'd say we have Russian-Soviet cuisine. I have taken all my favorite dishes and put them on the menu. Why did I call the restaurant Pushkin? My mother is a teacher of Russian language and literature. And as a child, when I lived in Russia, Pushkin was my favorite poet. Despite the fact that Americans are very fond of Russian cuisine, there is still one dish which horrifies them. You will soon find out what it is. When Americans come to the restaurant, which Russian dish do they order most often? Most often they order something that they may have heard of, that they know about. Borsh. Borsh for sure. Beef stroganoff, vareniki, dumplings, stuffed cabbage rolls. There were dishes that Americans didn't understand at all. I mean, as much as I love holodets or aspic, Americans can't look at it. They're scared of it like I don't know what. Is there any akroshka? There's akroshka, someone wants And how? They love akroshka. They eat lard by all means. I mean, you try not explaining to them what it is, because if you start telling them it's the fat from a pig's bag that you pickle and freeze and then chop it up like butter, just what is it? You say it's delicious cured meat, so it's meat, Russian-Ukrainian meat. Very tasty, take it, taste it. Ike once had to defend his restaurant with a gun. It was during the Black Lives Matter protests. The occasion was the murder of African-American George Floyd. You may remember it was all over the news. It was a very confusing time. You realize now that nothing probably would have happened. But there was a lot of confusion at the time. Covid, people smashing, burning stuff. We had a lot of buildings burned down in downtown. And in the next town they even set banks on fire and a lot of other things. And it wasn't clear what was going on. I understand that if I have everything burned down and broken down, it's just screwed up. By this point, well, me and my friends are really into guns. We each own six or seven or more different guns. They were excited. They were waiting for this call. I said, chaps, grab your weapons, come over. Before I finish, they were all instantly here. The guys came and were on duty with us. There were 12, maybe 13 of us. Some left, some came. And in the end, when that moment happened, when we had to go outside and there was a huge crowd marching, uh, there were maybe 10 of us at the time. Uh, then for another week, we were on duty. And guys with shotguns were standing in the windows inside. And of course, nobody did anything. Many people even expressed respect. Well done, guys, for defending. Not only the political situation in the country, but also the neighborhood with Mexico is affecting the restaurant. Generally, the fact that you have a restaurant here next to the Mexican border, does it affect the development of tourism in any way? Half of my chefs are Mexican. Half of my guys live in Mexico and work here. Really? Yes. They cross the border daily? Yes, they cross the border daily. I mean, I've got two dishwashers living in Mexico. In Tijuana? Yes, in Tijuana. They are American citizens. If they weren't Americans, they wouldn't be let in on a work visa. They're American citizens, but it's cheaper for them to live there. One has got two kids, he's got a mom, he's got a whole family, and he pays 300 bucks a month rent in Mexico. The other one has his own house there. They make 15 bucks an hour, when in Mexico they will be paid 15 bucks a day for washing dishes. And that's why the guys come here for 8-10 hours working with great gusto and go back to Mexico. And I have three or four of them. What's the difference in the cost of renting, let's say, in San Diego, one or two rooms, a nice apartment, and in Tijuana? Okay, in San Diego, you can't find anything for less than 1,500 bucks. And that's not going to be the best place. If you want a decent one-bedroom flat or condo in a decent neighborhood, it will cost at least 22, 2,500 bucks. 
In Mexico, it's 250 a month. So the difference is somewhere around 10 times cheaper. Fortunately, you don't need any passes to get to the legendary San Diego Island. I'm going to Coronado Island. Geographically, it's a peninsula, as it is connected by a narrow strip of land to the mainland. Coronado can be reached by car over the bridge or by ferry. I chose the first option. Here in Coronado is a paradise for lovers of bold American movies. A little different than all the rest. A quite old fashioned where a hat sometimes played chess. Remember Marilyn Monroe in a legendary film Some Like It Hot, sitting on a beach chair looking out for a millionaire on a yacht. Here is the beach, and behind me is the Del Coronado Hotel where the movie was filmed. And by the way, US presidents, Hollywood stars and British princes have stayed here. I thought I'd end up in that hotel. How many times have I seen that movie? As you can see, it's no coincidence that this hotel is considered a US National Historic Landmark. What struck me was that it has managed to retain the ineffable atmosphere of 30s and 40s America. the other side of San Diego, a place where time has no meaning. I'm in a hurry to meet the sea lions. They've taken up residence at La Jolla Bay. What waves there! Just how great the waves are! How beautiful it is! It gives me goosebumps. I'm so emotional. I adore the ocean. I just adore it. It's incredible. And there are seals swimming here from time to time. Surfers sitting on their boards on the lineup and seals next to them. No, they're not seals, they're sea lions. Sea lions are swimming next to them. Pelicans fly by. such places are much closer to me than the most comfortable zoos. What can be better for animals than freedom? How cool they are! But let me tell you, the smell of fish in here like some kind of fish market. The smell isn't a delight, though. But they don't pay attention to people at all. You look at them, you take photos. You're like white noise to them, like a white spot. You're like something invisible to them. You want to photograph sea lions endlessly. And you know where you can see these photos and more, don't you? As much as it's hard for me to part with the sea lions, but I have to rush to meet another San Diego resident. Yana has moved from Russia to San Francisco, but once she visited San Diego...
I just saw a very beautiful city. I saw that it was very prosperous. I guess that's such a good word. It's like it was made for just heaven on earth. Well, I packed my bags and I moved to San Diego. What am I doing here? Pretty much what I was doing in San Francisco. I'm a publisher of a women's magazine, the unique Gorozhanka project that has been around for 14 years. So long. Yes, it has. I started publishing it literally as soon as I came to America. Because I saw that there was no local magazine for Russian-speaking women that would help preserve our native traditions and culture. And Russian-speaking women truly need it, I thought. What's the magazine about? What sort of articles are there? Oh, the magazine is about our culture, of course. A magazine about Russian-speaking women who have achieved something in this country. Besides, I have another brainchild. It's become quite a stable project now. These are beauty contests, which are also originally aimed at Russian-speaking girls. Yana, like many San Diego residents, appreciates the city for its diversity of cultures. There are about 30 nationalities here. You have to agree, it enriches your knowledge of the world. And how are the Russians treated here? I always sense only a very good attitude towards Russians. There are some myths that people don't treat Russians in the very very friendly way. I have never felt it towards myself. I know for a fact that wherever I go, I'm always proud to say that I am Russian. And when I say that I am Russian, it seems as if all doors open in front of me. San Diego borders Mexico. What kind of imprint does that have on the city? The fact that Mexico is close by gives tourists an opportunity to come to San Diego and spend a lot of money here, so it's very good for a city's budget. Everyone in San Diego never tires of repeating that their city is special. And that fascinates me. And everyone finds their own advantages in it. What makes San Diego different from other American cities? It is a unique city, an extraordinary city. It has a different climate. It's summer all year round. And not a hot summer, but a mild, velvet summer. What makes it different is that the people here are more laid back. It's very hard to work, you know? I don't want to work. I want to spend time on the beach. It's hard to disagree with Yana. I'm going on to enjoy the beauty of San Diego. The Gaslight District awaits me. You can immerse yourself in the authentic 19th century atmosphere thanks to hundreds of historic Victorian buildings and cobblestone pavements. The lights are said to be electric rather than gas lanterns after all. The Gaslight District used to be a hotspot. Now it's the hub of San Diego nightlife. It's been a very eventful day. I'm glad it's ending in such a party spot. Because tomorrow I have a very serious sight waiting for me. Probably the biggest one in San Diego. It's about an aircraft carrier. It's the legendary aircraft carrier USS Midway. It was built just after the Second World War. Imagine this, it can hold 120 planes aboard. Anyone can tour this gigantic aircraft carrier. Wow, that's a cool one. Of course, children will enjoy this place. After all, anyone can press any button, turn any switch, pull any lever and so on. But I'll tell you this, I'm not a child, but I just love it. You can even sit inside some of the exhibits. Like this fighter jet, for example. Oh, isn't it a fighter jet? Oh! There are so many buttons in here. It works! I'm gonna fly away now! like in a museum at all. The real atmosphere of a warship is completely preserved here. Even the mannequins can be mistaken for real people. (music) 
There used to be life here. Oh, this was something lavish. This must have been the captain's quarters. This is where he slept. You have no idea how much I regretted parking the car for just two hours. I would have loved to spend the whole day on this ship. It's really big. It's gigantic. Anyway, to get through the whole ship, two hours isn't enough. And by the end I was running and running, trying to make it to the car before the car park ended. That's it, I'm off. Well, it's time to recap. I learned that San Diego's biggest advantage is its climate. Residents even pay a higher tax rate because of it. It wasn't without discoveries. The border with Mexico, which seemed like an obvious downside before coming here, has turned out to be an advantage. One day I'll make a video about life on the other side of the border. The sun shines here 320 days a year apart from today. There are 120 kilometers of some of the best beaches on the planet. Surfers glide on the azure waves of the Pacific Ocean and dolphins and sea lions ride the waves nearby. The cultures of 30 nations meet here. And it all creates fireworks of vivid impressions. That was San Diego. You're on the Yan Buyan channel. And my journey across America is just beginning.